Hello everybody, we are back again, another live stream. <coughs> Excuse me, a little cough in my throat. Yeah, playing bit two, we have bit two April months. This, um, I'm just playing one of the preset, Attic Strings 1, it's called. And I, what I did is uh, changing the, um, the envelopes a little bit to make it uh, more fade in, very long release. So uh, originally the preset is like this, which I started in the starting. But then I changed the attack. Here's the amp section where um, the attack decay, sustain and release determine how the uh, <clears throat> the um, curve of the volume is of the sound. And it's a nice thing. They call this on the um, mini moog, which is behind me. They lo they call it loudness contour so how the loudness develops so the attack means that the more you open it you get a slow attack and then it takes longer for the volume the sound to, to pop up to make it even better longer and what is that nice is also to have a very long release then you get really this uh this ambient type of pet sound can go even wilder, so even more attack, very slow attack, very long release. Let's see how that one sounds. Yeah, somebody mentions we don't see you, Rob. Oh, that's a good one. Did I just... Oh, yeah, my webcam is not working. Um. Okay, that's, that's strange. Didn't pop up. So let me see if I have... Yes. Let me see what I have in the upper screen. Oh, that's annoying. Hmm. No? Hmm. The device is not there. That's strange. But you see the keyboard. Hmm. That's that's a good one. <clears throat> yeah, that's typically I think an USB issue. Give me one second. Maybe I can activate it by simply uh, putting it in and out. Yeah, I'm not sure, guys, if it's going to pop up. Let's see if we can refresh it. I'm not sure if that's going to work. That's the other webcam. Yeah, that's annoying. Let's see if it... No, it doesn't want to. It's uh, a little bit stubborn. That's what you have with... Uh -oh. One second. Okay, we hear the sound. 
Yeah, there it is again. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a strange thing. With sometimes this USB, it doesn't recognize. Then you have to reboot again, and then it pops up again. So here I am. Open Task Manager. Well, I'm using OBS for the um, software, and I must say the I have a 19-inch PC case. And the um, the front USB is a little bit wobbly. I think that's one of the reasons why you sometimes hear this ding ding, and that makes a bad connection. It's very strange. Everybody, welcome. So um, yeah, we have the bit today. Today in April, we have the bit two thing, and I started with a uh, the Attic Strings one. So very nice, um, classic synth pad. And you see, simply by changing, and uh, many times I showed this on the live stream, how important the amp envelopes are with the tank decay, sustain, and release. That the original preset had a far more this type of sound. So that's very different than when I have a very slow attack and release and then play these. A lot of uh, influence. <clears throat> um, the thing with bit two, uh, one of the interesting things we did in bit two is the the ribbon controller, which has an also a spring back feature. So today's in the newsletter. I mentioned that we have April is bit two month, because I think essentially many people did not yet discover how great bit two is in terms of um the the sound quality but also the unique features we have inside of it um uh, let me see i need to open something well that's this one because i wanted to show you uh so i'm flying around with the um so i'll make bit now in the front because <clears throat> as as mentioned, one of the ideas came into bit two from a very old idea which I used about making music in the early 80s using an analog sequencer and having a dynamic step uh, selection. So maybe I should show you again this image what I had at that time. I think I made a nice image about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, what I had at that time, in the early 80s, we made with Peru and Nova music using a Korg SQ10 sequencer, which had done 12 steps, and you had this triggering reset. So if you uh, patch this cable here into, let's say, step 8, it would go until step 8, and then it does reset. So what I did at that time in the early 80s, I thought, yeah, well, hmm, that's not so cool. I want to have more variations. Is it making a switching board? So then the re-trigger goes into the step reset. And then I could use the little switches here to go from two steps to four steps to eight steps to 12 steps. And this old idea suddenly popped up uh, in uh, in my mind, why shouldn't we do this with of virtual analog synthesizers that we have the uh, step number dynamically? And uh, and you see something which is over forty years ago, uh, a um, manual hardware feature I did went into um, into bit two. So in bit two, essentially. The re trigger the step reset is down here in the in the uh, step number 
So let me show this in bit two. Here we down have the arpeggiator, and the arpeggiator has one advantage. You can use it also as a monophonic sequencer, so not only as an arpeggiator, because in the mode here you can see it's labeled sequencer. Well, here we have then the catch-up and the step numbers. Now it's 16, so if I play this one... Okay, we heard that sound too many times, so I'll take another one. So here's this one. Also 16 steps, but we have here this step number, which you can record as a parameter, and it, it doesn't interfere in playing. So once we start adding in it, uh, we first had these steps, but then, yeah, I found out it's pretty hard to hit the right number. So because if you, for instance, have a normal four quarters uh, thing, you don't want to end on the step eight. So we added the even catch up. So if I have even catch up, I catch up always with an even number. 16 or 4, 6. So you can start then. You can make really dynamic changes and it, it, it picks each time it starts again, it picks up the new number you selected. And so these old ideas came in bit 2. And I think it's pretty unique. I'm not sure if out of of software synthesizers or hardware synthesizers have this dynamic option because I simply can record this. So if I uh, have here a beat, I start recording uh, the note, but also the parameter. So read uh, the uh, write the parameters. Okay, I stop now. So now it did record it. Then I do up here the, oh, you don't see that the keyboard is in the way, but this is the parameter recording feature in Cubase up here. So I switch off and then you see here in Cubase, you see that the parameter is recorded. This is the step number, the amount of steps the sequence of plays. And I can play it back. So I go back and then you can see that it plays back here. So you can make very dynamic uh, sequence or arpeggiator things which changes over time so that's one of the, one of the cool things we added in bit two you see it changes now it goes to eight 16 steps Yeah, and the same we did also for the loop. So now I need to shut down the re read. So the loop start. So for instance, if you make here a tune, let's make more a tune. Okay, let's see. Uh, that's also a key entry. So I use that one. Okay, key entry off. And then also the loop star where it starts looping is also dynamic. And then you see this little square. Now it starts at seven or eight or nine in this case. And you see with loop start, I pick the catch up on odd because then uh, the start point, if you want to start on half of the sequence, it's you start on step nine, nine, ten. 11, 9 until 16 are 8 steps. So first it plays your first 8 steps. Then it catches up on 9. So these are also can recorded 
dynamically and you have the catch up. So this is one of the very cool features of Bit2. <clears throat> now I'm brainstorming uh, because this idea then also came over into GoToX. Uh, because once we added this in B2, we thought, oh yeah, this is also cool for GoToX. Also, GoToX has this feature. Another feature which we added is the ratcheting mode, which already was in Blade 2, uh, Predator 3, uh, Blue 3, uh, which makes that one step doesn't play one node, but divides it in two, so you can um, have it activated so I could say here it is and then of course with ratcheting I thought okay this is the classic way of ratcheting but I thought yeah well we have software we should have that far more intelligent so we have the option to have the ratcheting playing or ratcheting not playing so in this case not playing this is the on the off on cycle or you can have the on off cycle so then first it plays the ratcheting or you can have um this one two off one on three off one on like that so three off cycles and then the third one fourth round is then with the ratcheting and then we have the additional one which is velocity which is now it starts but if I open the ratcheting velocity then I need to play harder to get the ratcheting so if I play soft no ratcheting if I play harder the ratcheting appears so the velocity acts like a threshold Okay, checking the chat room. Okay, yeah, some of the modular Eurorack sequences. Yeah, I have the dark, the dark from Dubflow. That doesn't have the option, I think, no. Yeah, you can switch off steps, but um, the reset is a little bit different array. Yeah, it depends, I think. Um, but essentially, it's very cool that you can use it in a dynamic, dynamic way. So the arpeggiator works in this case as a sequencer, which is, of course, different than a um, arp. So essentially, it's an arp plus the sequencer. One idea across my mind is I think it's still kind of polyphonic if I listen to the release. So the sequence is really like a monophonic old style sequence where you put in the notes. Uh, there's always a um, a command feature which is down here. So if you say reset, clear all, then it resets everything, and you have like a normal arpeggiator. And of course, the um, arp section also has the velocity key dial here this special feature which i also explained many times which is very very cool to have is that um velocity to the left means that the velocity setting here which you change here is ruling the synth engine so if of course you need to have velocity active for instance in the filter um which is this one Here the changes, these are the velocity settings here. Yeah, 
data changes. So these are the velocity settings, and because the velocity of is set fully to the left, the velocity setting of the sequencer are ruling. But you also can say, I don't want that. I want to have the keyboard only as ruling. This makes that essentially these are not doing anything anymore, except if you have them in the modulation matrix connected. You know, you see, I play now the keyboard. So that's the keyboard, how I play it. And you can mix in between. So you can say also mix between these velocity settings here and what I play with the, with the keyboard. So if you want to really make from these accent, so this one is really then now only responding to the velocity of the keyboard input. And the velocity is pretty much, it's, uh, it's filtered too. And if I play loud, You can do very different things, so options are plenty. And this Velocity Keyboard feature you will find in all our instruments which have an appenturator <clears throat> a sequencer on board. And it's really, yeah, how you want to use it yourself, but uh, you have a lot of creative options with that one. <clears throat> yeah, the other thing, of course, what popped up in bit two is this... Uh, Ribbon control, which you can record as a parameter, but it goes back and, it, and you can spring back. You can, of course, also shut it off so that it goes, stays on the value. Or you can say instant, or you say go, go back smoothly, let's say in half a bar. And you see the ribbon controller is addressed here in the mod matrix ribbon and it's 25%. I can increase that of course. What does the smooth dial? That's a good question. Ooh, smooth dial. Ah, that one is for <clears throat> if you use the free row on a parameter, which is maybe a little bit more clicky, then it um, makes the the um, the values smoothes out the values. So that's more on the free row. It's a good question. So if I use this one. Now it's on the filter. Should have no influence. You see? But if you put it on, uh, let's say, pitch, if I change here pitch in a different way, so now I take the free row and uh, I take the semi, drag and drop, and use the free row. Good question. Up free row. You hear that now? Now it makes a... So it makes a glide, it's, uh, uh, in this case. Um, so now you can hear it very clearly because I did set it to tuning. But for instance, if you have the free roll, for controlling things in the delay mix, which I could do. So yeah, I could say, okay, let's go with the mix down here, free row. 
and then take the mix. Let me see. Mix, delay mix. Okay, then maybe if if you use a free row and it has big jumps in values. So let's make it like this. Yeah, that now it controls the mix of the uh, delay. And then you can smooth that out. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's in case you hear artifacts, the smooth. Maybe it's a good idea to have it uh, smooth connected to the free row in terms of the label for it. But it's a very good question. Um, it should not influence if I change here the tuning because therefore we have the glide. No. Therefore we have the slide. Yeah, slide, slide. cool thing with the ribbon controller you can really have things more smoothing going so uh, yeah good question about the smooth because uh, I also forgot that so you see the arpeggiator is um, <clears throat> has a lot of features and so now it's still in the let's do the sequencer mode So now we have the time mode. I hear something inside this one. No, it's okay. The time mode means here the time mode is normal. That is, then you have step one is length by step two, three, and four. That's what they call the time. Hear that? Now in the special mode it still changes the tuning. So it plays legato, but changes the tuning. Then you get this. So this is the normal time mode. This is the time, the special mode. Got a bit more TBT. You can combine the toggle one means first it's plays special then normal and toggle 
toggle two means first in space normal and then special. So these are also cool features which you will find also in our other sequences, by the way. Okay, let me check the chat room because I'm playing around. Yeah, the other thing which makes bit very cool is the advanced page in the oscillator, which makes that you keep a lot of free spots in the mob matrix, but also, for instance, if you would like to create pulse width modulation, you know, the classic uh, pulse width modulation sounds, then you don't need to uh, sacrifice the LFO, which you use for the filter, but you have inside each oscillator your own... Um, I need to go to pads. So if I was... so here you see pulse width modulation. You know the the pulse. It's a Jupiter A type of sound. If you go to the advanced panel, you can see that each oscillator has its own LFO. And the LFO, you see here, symmetry, which is pulse width modulation, symmetry, you see the little white ring means that it's modulated. If I click it, you can see that the amount is open. So the LFO controls the symmetry, which results in, if I go back to the... And you see, I pan this one left to the left, so the... Oscillator 1 goes into filter 1 because it's oscillator split here in the pass of filter 2. Filter 2 goes in... Oscillator, sorry, oscillator 2 goes in filter 2. But also has symmetry modulation, but that's a little bit different speed compared to oscillator 1. And then you get a very wide stereo sound, uh, also because the two filters here, 12 dB low pass, have a little bit different cut of frequency setting. So you see cutoff frequency of this one, if you see in the upper readout, here this is the readout there, you can see cutoff is 761 of filter 1, it's filter 2 is 710, so there are a few hertz difference. And that's also what I did with my beloved Jupiter 8, is the way I use made paths. Uh, with Jupiter 8 is like I do it now in bit 2 <clears throat> and um, using the 12 dB filter because that one is very nice for pads and then I did this uh, symmetry modulation thing so it's uh, for the people who know maybe a little bit of the older band I played in let me see if I so typical Yeah, then we have, of course, the option to use unison, but I tried to make this one as natural sounding, although the original Jupiter 8 doesn't have any delay, but it's always nice to have a little bit of delay on it. So I made a few of these different types. You see sometimes some small differences between them. So all car small variation. So, and that's the concept of bit two is, is to, uh, it's a virtual analog, but it's not a replica from anything. I simply take the best of all of them, combine them together, put new things in it. Uh, so if you say, okay, well, I want to have a type of mini Moog lead sounds. Well, it's inside here, like the Attic Moogie, which uh, is like the mini Moog style of lead sound.
you see, uh, and in the music, uh, a good one who can hear a difference with a real mini moke. And it's also about the music. So, um, yeah, sequence sounds. Also, the basses, of course, are. Of course, we have Subboom Bass 2, which has a lot of these type of sounds as well. And also a range of tuned percussion. So yeah, it's a different concept, but... Some good basses inside this one. This. Yeah. Very dry. But it's very good in the music. Yeah, also what I wanted to show today is the combination if you uh, have a virus B, for instance, or any other hardware synthesizer, which sends out controllers to use the uh, virus B, for instance, for controlling bit two. Only um, I, I uh, had the lack in time to connect it, but let me show you. I. Yeah, it's the virus B, you can see it. And then you could use the filter envelopes, the amp envelopes, the filters. Use that one for controlling the, um, the bit two. And essentially, if you have uh, an older virus A, B, maybe even a C would work. If you go up here, you can see SCS, which stands for external controller setup. And you can load a setup, and I created the Access Virus B setup, which you can load. It's I think it's also inside the installer. If I'm not wrong, if not so, let me know, <clears throat> and I can uh, link it for you. But then you can use the Virus B. Another option is, of course, to use the complete control. But that one has currently a technical issue because let's see what happens. Let me see. Open control is that my first dial goes high wire. You can see it up here, this wave. Okay, let me see. I'm not sure what is going on. So you see here, wave jumps, do weird stuff. I have no idea. Oh, so it, it, complete control, uh, then you have these dials and you can see them in the upper screen. Then you can go to a uh, different page. Yeah, it's the first dial which is doing a very strange... I think the dial is defect. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I would love to show you um, the cool, cool things you can do, but it's... I think my keyboard is defect. So it's not usable at this moment. <clears throat> strange, strange. So... Um, but then you can, if you have a, uh, a MIDI keyboard, which has the option for uh, sending out controller data, then you can control uh, with the dials, especially if like the virus B, it has attack, decay, sustain and release, you can really connect that to the user interface of Bit2. <clears throat> Yeah, the other thing that we did was bit two, which makes it different um, compared to yeah uh, other is to have the modulation options here, which you can see you can change the phase modulation, frequency modulation, and I'm pretty not sure if phase modulation is possible on a real analog synth. I discussed that with a guy, a person who repairs a lot of. Uh, synthesizers and he never saw that maybe that is typically a digital thing but yeah we added it uh, because it has some nice sounds you can create with that so let me see if i you can make these sound you see here pm phase modulation go to the advanced panel <clears throat> and this is the amount control, and that's also the reason why we have the feature here to oscillate one is active, but it doesn't go to the filter, so it's only modulating oscillator two. 
Så i hvert fald. A lovely FM type of synthesizer by using phase modulation. And that's why the advance is so cool, because in the advance panel you can say, see here, there's a little white ring around it, so the volume of the oscillator is controlled, the amount is open, by an envelope. So uh, the oscillator 1 modulates oscillator 2, but only for a very short time. Because if you have a constant modulating, you get things like this. So if you make that only modulating for a short time, you can make these cool FM type of percussion sounds. So it's also in, in that terms, it's a kind of blue tree super light version. Uh, but then, yeah, I mean, you still have the oscillators, which are, by the way, not used by this one, but you have then uh, all kind of. Nice FM type of sounds. This sounds very FM. So, uh, yeah, um, let me see. There is in the lead sounds, by the way, very nice lead sound because of this, but I need to see which it was. No. It's kind of didgeridoo sound. Let me see if I... Oh, of course, that's a good one. We have stars here. I can give things a star. Ah, this one, the bamboo lead, yeah. Very cool sound, uh. And that one uses also triangle waveform modulated by oscillator one. And here you see the volume is has a slow attack. Which makes this blow. So you can have yeah, this sounds almost like uh, a modeled synthesizer. After touch makes that that's the pitch LFO up right here. It responds to modulation wheel. But also after touch. So it's very, very versatile. And for some people still under the radar a bit too. And I think what I like about it, it's very focused on the uh analog things or many um, essentially all pages except for the advance are visual and you it's it's an easy to use synthesizer and that's also of course very tempting okay with native complete control Johan and bench is in the chat room a bit of topic with native instrument complete control you can program the white button above the displays. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah, and we never use these uh, white ones. Uh, I think the white ones, what you see now, which I point out with my finger, um, I didn't use them, indeed. Cool. So let's see the chat room if there are more questions about a bit. Maybe I missed some things. So it's great for a really analog type of sounds. I also created some classic synth sounds, like the one which is uh, used by Vangelis, this harp type of sound. Let me see if I can. Not that one. Okay. Let me see where ah oh, where is it? Car theme brass? No. Ah, C as Vangelis. No, 
Blues. And if I'm not wrong, I'm using the 12 dB filter because originally the CS80 DMR has a 12 dB filter. Okay, not really correct. Or it's John Vangelis. Okay, wrong notes again, but I'm just playing it from my head. Yeah. Okay, nice to hear that people really enjoy bit two. Yeah, uh, I use it also myself together with the other ones. Sometimes when I have a fast result, I grab to bit two. <clears throat> it has a very bright, full sound, which has a lot of harmonics, because it's totally computer generated. There are no samples used in this. This is really virtual analog created. So, um... <laughs> of high harmonics and of course the effects are very nice yeah two bells yeah even yeah so it's it's beyond the classic virtual analog because of the little features we added, like the face modulation, the advanced page, and of course it has the double filters, panning option, and a unison, which is uh, yeah sometimes nice if you put that. Don't put it too much. Well, let's see if I can have a pet sound which uses it. Oh, this one uses the phaser, yeah. Is it Nick B mentioned? Oh, it doesn't eat CPU. Oh, uh, well, we don't compromise in terms of audio quality because of CPU. CPU is not a issue in these days, but it's good to hear that even on an older PC, it still is workable as a product. Um, So the mark will know. Going to France. Okay. Oh, I, I know that track, but um So big. This is a very Wrong notes. So very open strings. This is very open, very bright. So and, and yeah, essentially it's logic. No filters is used with this one. This is purely saw waves you hear, just like a Selena strings, which doesn't have a filter. It's just saw many saw waves together. That is a nice one. We have, of course, Prisma, where you combine bit together. So I could say, oh, what I could do now, by the way, is simply by... Okay. That's another bit. Okay, why does it move here?
Okay. So there's another one. But let me take here a... And that's a little trick you can do, by the way, without using uh, Prisma. You also can say, I simply pick two tracks in Cubase. Uh, let me see what I take, just for the fun. Okay, this one, I take this one. Make this very... very long attack and release and then I pick the other one make the same open it okay come on yeah where is it also now and the trick what you can do in Cubase most likely also with other ones um, let me delete this one is that you have bit here and then you use the shift and select the second track next to it is also bit but which has this uh a pet sound more jupiter like and then you combine them together It's this sound together with this sound. So that's also a trick. You don't always have to use uh, Prisma. So you could say, I take this one and I play this one inside my uh, sequencer. So making a big stack analog sounds. Yeah, so this use kind of drama strings if you want to repeat that. Open the attack and the release, make it very slow attack. And the other path sound is the um, the GP dual path two. I could check with Prisma. Maybe with Prisma there is one. Only with Prisma it takes a little bit more time to. Let me see. Add track. Let me sec select Prisma. Give me a second. <clears throat> Where is it? Okay. I open Prisma. Then I go to Manager. I go to Super Pads. I'm most likely Order by date, most likely Grease Evening Pad. Let's see if that one is maybe using bit two. So you see loading, it takes a little bit of time to load. Mm, yeah, it uses bit two, but um, in this case for the Jupiter sound, I use Blue 3, which has a choir also. So this is sound one, this is sound two. Ah, it's not a pad. Yeah, I think. That's the cool thing about Prisma, you can combine.
Combine things together. It takes a little bit of time to load it, but you have the four controls. What you can use, I go back to the manager, Alaska pad. So of course, the um, Prisma doesn't make that you use less CPU. If you have two instruments selected, like this one uses Blue 3 and Predator 3, it uses two instances. So it it's, uses more CPU because it is essentially the same as if you would have two tracks playing two instruments. No, the bright face, such shell pad. Be bright. I'm, I'm trying out to see if I have something. Oh, this one is again bit two. Oh, this one uses the kind of drama strings. And with Selena and Pat, oh, this could be a very big one. So this one uses bit two, two sounds, bit two has this drama string and this blue three sound is using the Selena plus pad. So real Selena strings. Big pad, B bright amp. Pad, so nice for ambient music and you still can adjust the attack make that even longer less Selena good um yeah, Prisma and drums, uh, we have the feature in Prisma where you can have the um, layout this way that you trigger the sequencer. So yeah, the options are huge in Prisma. Uh, only takes a little bit more time to load. Yeah, we have even RG grooves here, um, RG stacks, which using um, combination of RG power two. We get a new plugin in the very near future, which is a kind of uh, G bot specialized on power cords and some cool new features that hopefully maybe ahead of the summer, but maybe also now in April, we will have a new FX. So we are busy for you guys making cool products so that you enjoy creating music. Okay, guys, this was it for the day. Maybe I, I, I try to recall and I'll do next week. It's Pick the um, the virus B to show you how it's cool to latch the controls. And uh, thanks for watching. Give a video a thumbs up if you like it. Spread the word about the live stream. I also hope you liked the live stream of last week with where we had my old Roland SA One Show One Hundred One, and I uh, told a little bit about that. Uh, a little beast and uh, you always can watch it back in youtube you have the uh the menu in the top or below the videos where you can say uh check videos shorts of live so all in live all the live streams are there thank you for watching and uh see you next time guys bye bye <laughs>